Cool. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm Martin uh, from Gnosis, and I have to, yeah, kind of uh, be honest, quite new to the, uh, to the uh, AI field. So with Gnosis, we are yeah, for a long time uh, in the blockchain field, have done all kinds of things, uh, started to build prediction markets. We're very early to Ethereum, so we basically before ESC20 tokens existed and MetaMask. So kind of over the years, we built a bunch of Ethereum infrastructure. Maybe the most famous one is um, kind of safe. Uh, but yeah, then in the last, since last two years are doing um, Gnosis Chain. Um, but well, <laughs> since two months, got extremely excited about, um, well, AI. Uh, and for me, really the eye opener was, um, yeah, kind of those uh, uh, agents or yeah, auto GPT maybe as the most famous um, examples, and I think I don't need to explain it. Um, everyone I assume is aware, and there was a, there have been also uh, references um, at previous talks. One thing I want to mention is kind of there is a smaller or kind of a um, yeah kind of a less famous but I think super interesting version of uh, auto GPT called Robo GPT, and I think it's super interesting because it's very very clean it's, it's written in a very clean way so i haven't really um uh, done productive coding in five six years but still i was able with my python skills within very short time to kind of um, uh, extend it and this will be partially um what i will be talking about um so yeah so um we see it we, we are seeing those agents and um essentially they are able to um, to kind of select from a list of um, yeah abilities, um, and I think we had different words uh, for that: um, services, um, uh, modules, max um, actions. Uh, but but it, it, at the end of the day, um, yeah, it's it's uh, it's simple or it's yeah APIs um, that can perform um, specific. Um, tasks and uh, to make auto GPT really powerful currently you have to give it or there's a config file which at least allows you to uh, give it 10 different uh, API keys so to, to really run it yourself you need to in principle need to sign up with all those different services and give it kind of well enter your credit card information uh, and then feed um, your personal agent your auto GPT thing with those um, uh, with those uh, different API keys. And at the end of the day, it's really just a way to do um, payment. And here we come and we, we think kind of for payments, we can actually use the blockchain. And I think this sentence was also said a few times during this uh, conference, um, an AI agent will not have a bank account, will not have a, a credit card, but will very well be able to control a, a private key. Um, so all those services, um, um yeah kind of that you can call um they can easily be wrapped behind uh, uh, or kind of um on chain and that is what we um have tried to define and it may, might look here more complex um, than it is uh, at the end it's literally just kind of from an end user perspective you just need to focus on the left side so you have a mac an ai mac um and it really just has more or less two functions. One is a request request function where, you, where end user, and this end user can of course be uh, something like AutoGPT, uh, does a request with some arguments, with some data, and then, well, someone owns this Mac uh, and, and there can be kind of a complex backend. And we have um, heard that earlier, uh, how, how that could look like, but at the end, well, someone can, um, Call this Mac and uh, deliver a response, um, um, and the response could actually even do some kind of callback um, into another contract. But but just in the simple, simplest form, you have a request and you have a um, kind of deliver uh, um, answer. So the vision would be: what if we uh, don't have to give uh, our kind of auto GPT agent fifteen different API keys? but just uh, one private key and put a uh, dollar on it. Uh, and then it's able to, um, um, yeah, kind of to make those calls. And yeah, quite quite happy that we were able, um, yeah, with a bunch of people uh, on the call just in the last weeks to, yeah, essentially hack that together and uh, have that 
um, live running um, as a prototype. And I'm showing you here a little bit, a um, little bit, uh, yeah, bit of code out of those. Uh, of this, yeah, in this case, this, this is Robo GPT. So you can see here is a list of actions. Um, and again, it's super, it's super amazing how simply you can, uh, how simply you can add new action. All you need to do is really just have a textual description of that ad action and have minimal information of uh, kind of what input format um, this action. Um, does and then kind of yeah the llm does the magic of kind of running through this loop where it's trying to plan a task and essentially pick from um, those actions but again in this case we added a new action um, this draw image thing and here again instead of using instead of requiring a new uh, api key we just said okay we are for this one we are calling this um we are calling this um uh, this ai mac uh, and yeah, we'll look how how that looks uh, uh, in detail. So here again, super super simple, trivial example. But but note, I um, I didn't explicitly uh, said okay, it should should um, draw an image. I said first, yeah, uh, first do research, research how aliens look like and, and draw one, and then kind of well, Auto GPT does a thing, it kind of it makes a plan. Okay, it decides first to to um, yeah, kind of to Google. Uh, and find a bunch of relevant addresses of how do aliens look like in popular culture. Then, yeah, it extracts information uh, from one of them, in this case, the Guardian culture, how, um, and so on. And eventually it comes up with a description uh, of an alien with green, or kind of a green skin, large eyes, small body, blah, blah, blah. Um, and in our case here, this is the, one, the thing I want to draw your attention to. At the end, it results in a, in a for, for this draw uh, image um, thing, we are now kind of using a um, yeah kind of an on-chain transaction. So you see here uh, the last three things is kind of the the the, the first is IPFS um, uh, uh, kind of uh, object that contains this request, then the on-chain transaction, and eventually a request ID. So. This transaction happened just uh, two hours ago before before this conference started. So um, again, the very top address here on the slide is um, is yeah, essentially this um, key that this Robo GPT instant now holds, and that I gave I don't know a dollar, something like that. Um, the contract it now calls was this on-chain Mac. Um, and the call did contain a payment, and the Mac specified that it wanted uh, to have a payment, or the Mac can specify that it needs a specific payment um, for a request to be valid. In this case, it's set to one cent. Um, so yeah, the, the, the one cent payment is part of that uh, request. And then eventually, um, the request uh, contains um, data, but not the data directly, because that yeah doesn't scale, scale scale all that well, but so instead, uh, I mean in this case it wouldn't even be possible to put the data directly on chain. But uh, in in this case the um, uh, the data is an IPFS uh, or kind of an IPFS uh, um, uh, yeah link or, or kind of um, yeah IPFS hash, and that IPFS hash then has this specific um, yeah kind of uh, content here. And then in the next step, um, uh, and, and this is also kind of what RoboGPT then can do, is kind of listen for, for the response or for, listen for the response event on chain. Uh, and eventually, yeah, kind of gets this nice um, um, picture drawn. Um, the amazing part here is that the, the code to do that, um, yeah, was extremely simple to, to write. So this is literally all, uh, all kind of I had to add. And now we can actually go a step further and go away from, uh, from this model where you have a predefined list um, of actions. Uh, instead, we can now start our, um, uh, our program by querying this registry um, on chain where kind of those Macs are registered and, and all they need is kind of such a simple textual description of their own service. Uh, and then, um, yeah, you can kind of 
uh, such an agent can, while at runtime, uh, extend its its capabilities essentially, and kind of at runtime query new uh, actions. It, it it can then use to perform its its larger uh, its larger task. That that's really kind of I think the the vision we are or that that yeah a bunch of us uh, is bringing a bunch of us together kind of to to come um, to this um, stage. So short uh, short. Um, Kind of um, uh, yeah, note on, on on Gnosis chain. So it's a it's a chain well extremely compatible uh, with Ethereum. It actually used to be, uh, or Gnosis chain used to be, or one, was one of the first side chains uh, for Ethereum. Initially, it was called XDAI, and a um, little bit or roughly one and a half year ago, we kind of merged merged tokens and kind of turned it somewhat into Gnosis chain. But in the end, it, it's really kind of just a, a chain extremely compatible to Ethereum. It also uses Ethereum um, consensus. But I think the, <laughs> the thing that makes it for, for this project very interesting is ex just the very, very low um, transaction fees. And maybe also the fact that the base token uh, is XDAI, so essentially just DAI bridged, um, or well, DAI, therefore kind of dollar bridged from, from mainnet Ethereum. Um, uh, so yeah, it's, it's very very easy to do a payment. And again, in, in this example uh, that I showed you, I, I, well, the transaction just contained a one cent payment, and the transaction fees was just um, a fraction of that. And maybe as an outlook, uh, that works for now uh, quite well. Um, uh, and uh, but but eventually we can also kind of go to layer twos. Um, so yeah, we hope Gnosis Chain can become a place for those AI agents. And yeah, kind of once we have this permissionless registry, yeah, we want to kind of discover those actions. We want to do the communication, the payment. We want to have maybe then things like uh, arbitration or rating of those um, of those actions. Um, I'm uh, today already get warnings uh, about time. Uh, 